Yo, what's up guys, it's Talon. Today, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how to win games without tanks. And so I'm just gonna get straight into kind of the first example here, which is more of a long example where I'm not necessarily gonna go over a specific like one play that I make. It's more about the overall mindset going into this next kind of five, six minutes of this game. So the first thing to note is, as I talk about, in my previous videos of being you know playing from behind we're down in this game and so because we're down in this game that's going to be one reason i'm going to play in a side lane but another reason i'm playing on a side lane is because when you have no tank and you don't really have a good engage or a good way to start a team fight it's important to try to drag the enemy to other sides of the map create 1v1s two versus twos different amounts of fights rather than 5v5s you don't always have to fight a 5v5 as the tank comp so so again when you are you know the non-tank comp rather you don't have to always force these fights instead again i go on the side lane first one because we're behind and usually when you're behind you want to create you know the start split pushing and play towards the sides but again the other reason is being because we don't really do very well in the team fights as a team comp because the enemy are better at engaging they have better engage and we're really squishy so we would rather create these kind of odd man fights stuff like that and just have more hectic things occurring around the map and then once you know maybe you do get that kill on the side lane in the 1v1 or you win that 2v2 with your teammates then you can start coming towards mid coming towards objectives making plays around other parts of the map so you're kind of going to just see here throughout this game not only are we behind and then coming back i'm just going to kind of start skipping through showing you guys again some random fights the enemy make a couple dumb throws because we're dragging them across the map and then once you know again we kill someone on one side of the map we end up coming, then they try to fight us. It just leads to a very hectic scenario. So really the first thing I want to emphasize again with playing without a tank is to kind of try to make the game a bit hectic, make fights happen all over the map. You can see just constant fighting going on at different points of the map with different amounts of people. So there's never really a time to engage because nobody needs to engage because these fights are always occurring with different amounts of people. So like, again, in the 5v5, it's going to be really hard if you don't have, you know, a Malphite alt or an Alistar engage or a Leona or someone to, to you know, go in and make the engage for you. But when there's not so many people, it's not really the same way. You can just kind of sit here. And, and this is going to be kind of the second point as well in this fight. And so once you do have a lead on a poke comp like we do, where we don't really have a front line, you see how we're taking control of the bush. We're using our vision then to poke the enemy, get there first. So getting to an objective first so that you can poke people off the objective that way they have to come into you and engage into you and then you can just counter engage you don't actually have to make the you know the first engage you can just keep poking them like we are here whereas say that we were you know later to the objective the enemy got here first well then we're not going to be able to do that because they're going to have the agency to create a fight and to you know go in on us rather than us being the ones poking them out getting them low before the fight starts and then leading to a situation like this where the talent is now and not in a great spot all of a sudden one of our teammates can make an engage and one shot someone so again kind of the main points of, of this first clip are one when you're behind but two when you don't have a tank make the game hectic make plays happen on different sides of the map just try to create fights on different sides of the map look for those small advantages you can get in the 1v1s and the 2v2s and then secondly make sure that you're first on the objective when you do have the opportunity to do so that way you're not the one who has to engage but rather the enemy has to engage on you okay so this clip is going to again exemplify kind of the side laning thing that's important playing around the sides but i also kind of want to talk about during this clip just the importance of playing for picks and using vision to play for those picks so oftentimes taking sweeper later in the game and then you know using a bush in order to you know maybe surprise an enemy and one shot them burst them down because oftentimes when you're not a you know tanky champion that means you're going to have assassins you're going to have burst damage you're going to have poke and so in a scenario like that you definitely want to look for plays to maybe use bushes or use vision to end up killing the enemy and obviously in this scenario you see that they end up trying to go for 1v1 on me, but usually a lot of these bursts, just, you know, assassins or champs like Jace or side laners, right? They're going to be really good at the 1v1s, and so Master Yi is going to lose that 1v1 to me because I'm drawing them to the side. Zed's then going to come to me as well. He's going to kill me, but that doesn't matter because, you know, my teammates are getting the Baron on the other side of the map. Well, that happens. And even if, you know, your teammates aren't as good, you know, obviously I'm in a higher elo, so my teammates are decent, and they're going to sometimes make better plays, even if that's not the case for you. Having, you know, two people come to you and trading your life for, you know, two people on your side of the map... That still means that your, your teammates get to do something, right? And they're not always going to take advantage of that, but oftentimes they will, and it's going to just overall at least create some type of advantage for you. Okay, so in this next clip, I want to emphasize the importance of priority. So what priority is, it basically means that you have the lane pushed, and then by having the lane pushed, the enemy have to respond to that lane, or else it will die to their turret, allowing you to then go to the objective first. So I spoke about how important it is to be on the objective first, and then this is how you're going to actually get that to happen. You're going to push the lane first. And so in this scenario, I can't really contest the top side. I actually used the same example in my last video, and you can see it has multiple purposes, this, this example of kind of different things that go into it. And so in this scenario, again, 
I'm pushing the mid lane first to have priority because then I can move into the objective first. Now you're going to see I'm able to poke them a bit before they come in because I get control of the objective. Now you're going to see I'm going to go for bot lane priority because again, this will make the Maokai then have to respond to me. He has to come here. He's dragged here. As you can see, I have the lane pushing, which means once I crash this wave under his turret, I now have time to first rotate while he's stuck clearing a wave, allowing me to get there first once again. Now in this scenario, we're not going to end up winning the fight just because of how it turns out, but you can see I'm always able to be there first because I'm controlling the waves i'm the one pushing the turrets first and then it leads me to getting a kill even in a scenario where my team's not doing well and we're at least able to get something out of it so again to reiterate it's extremely important to have priority when you don't have a tank because it means that then you can be the one to get to the objective first which allows you to poke them off the objective makes them have to engage into you and is going to allow you to get better you know overall plays off in the fight and whatever and then you can also see here in a poke comp you don't want to hard engage i'm sitting here i'm poking people I'm looking for picks, but I'm never really hard engaging and going all in until I see an opportunity. I'm just going to take what I can get. I'm going to get the kills and the picks that I can get, and then I'm going to back off even if the fight doesn't look like it turns out too, too well. Again, it turns out a lot better just because we do have that priority. Okay, so now on kind of playing the actual team fights when you do get into a scenario where you might need to 5v5. It's extremely important to try to bait and engage from the enemy. Make sure that they engage onto you. Once again, you know, we want control and then we want them engaging onto us because we can't, you know, go in. So again, Maokai is going to go in stupidly onto me, and the reason he's doing that is because we're focusing on kind of making the tank, you know, want to go in, and then what this does, it kind of makes the, spy, the fight get split up, it makes the enemy go in too early without them having proper follow-up, so again, make sure you kind of pressure the tank or the engaged champion when their team isn't too nearby, because then if they go in on you, that's going to waste their actual engage, and then they're not going to have proper follow-up because their teammates are too far away, whereas say that we waited to pressure that Maokai because we were scared, we were like, oh, I can't kill Maokai, why would I go on him? Well, in that scenario, right, if we just waited, then his teammates would have been in a position where now they would have been able to follow up. It would have been too late to win that fight. But instead, again, we bait out the engage. We try to wait for the enemy to engage, let them make the play, and then we're going to respond to it rather than trying to overforce a play ourselves. Okay, guys, so this last sort of example is kind of more, I just want to talk about how important it is to play around resets often in these team comps. So in this game, for example, I have a Viego and I also have a Aurelia. And both of these champions, they're really good at playing around resets just as champions. Also, you can see a very funny escape there. I can't believe I somehow lived that. But they're both, both champions who are very good about playing around resets. You know, Aurelia has a reset when she gets a kill on her first ability, for example, like how she gets a triple kill here. Viego has obviously his ultimate resets. And playing around these types of resets is just very valuable in these team fights. So you play to kind of burst down one member of the enemy and then by bursting down that one member of the enemy you get you know maybe a riven reset aurelia gets you know her time to pop off diego right you just have to take these sort of moments these these smaller windows to really find that one opportunity where you can target someone or burst them down and that's kind of how you're going to play these comps a bit more patiently looking for you know those specific moments um so that's mostly going to do it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed as always the the main again points are kind of just first of all make sure that you have priorities so that you can get to the objectives first when you're on the objectives first use that time to kind of poke people out play for picks play around side lanes to create 1v1 1v or 1v2 opportunities 2v1 opportunities things like that rather than playing for 5v5s and then when you're in the 5v5s try to bait the enemy engages let them engage into you which again is a lot easier if you get onto the objective first and then play for the resets oftentimes when you do have a reset comp uh in you know scenarios where you do have a, a poke comp or a comp that's not really very tank heavy um, but yeah, if you guys are interested, I do coaching for just $15 an hour if you didn't know. Uh, but that's going to do it for the video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.